Indecisive is my favorite word. Actually, scratch that. Indecisive is one of my favorite words. Well, maybe. Indecisive used to be one of my favorite words, but if you made me choose right now, today, and my life depended on it, I probably would say mm, blip. Yes, blip. Not only is it pretty fun to say blip, but also every time I think of it, it reminds me of how small I am in the grand scheme of things and how a single decision that I make most likely won't lead to extinction through nuclear fallout. Hopefully. Well, it could. <laughs> Moving on. Every day, you are surrounded by decisions. Whether trivial or life-changing, humans on average face tens of thousands of decisions a day. I have so much trouble making these decisions. This is because I am an overthinker, which means that I dwell on the past, the present, and the future. I often stay awake at night thinking about one moment in my day in which I did something wrong, a question on a test where I made a silly mistake, or a decision I made that I wish I could change. I can spend hours upon hours thinking about how these decisions might affect my life later. Similarly to throwing a pebble in a pond, a ripple effect is left. Overthinking leads to endless cycles of thought. And when I have to make decisions, I look at every little factor and option, which can be extremely exhausting and time consuming. I don't even want to go into how much time it took for me to decide on a topic for my TEDx talk. That time wouldn't be measured in hours, but more like a fraction of a year. When I make decisions, I look at pros and cons, benefits and drawbacks. I ask others how they feel. I try to imagine how others would react. All of those things can be helpful when making a decision. What's not helpful is that I dwell on each and every single one of them for much more time than I should. Sometimes my thought process is so convoluted and time consuming that I can't accomplish simple tasks because my brain can't get past a minuscule issue that is unresolved. Overthinking creates tremendous stress in my life. It becomes hard to focus on important things, and even activities that were supposed to be fun sometimes can cause a spiral into stress. It's hard to live in the moment and enjoy simple things because of overthinking. We become victims of our own thoughts, and in a way, we sabotage our aims by overthinking our steps. Analysis paralysis often is the very reason we can't accomplish the goals we wish to achieve because our decision-making skills are hurt by the fact that we can't get out of our heads. Here's an example. A few weeks ago, the dreaded time of year arrived. Course selection. I received a whole book of the classes I could take and a big green sheet of legal paper to fill out a four-year plan on. Clearly, this was a high-stakes project. I was planning out the next four years of my life, very important years. But luckily for me, there was a set path for two classes, advanced English and advanced history. But that left me with math, science, language, and other elective classes to choose from. Should I take this AP class? Is this class too easy? Is this class too hard? Will the material ever be useful? Should I do dual enrollment even if the credit won't transfer to the college I want to go to? What college do I want to go to? What story do I want my transcript to tell? What do I even want to do when I grow up? These questions were my immediate thoughts. The rest of the day, as I went through my classes, every time I looked down at my books, I saw that big green sheet of paper staring at me, stirring all the questions and decisions I had left to answer. I could barely focus. At debate practice, my head was full of questions, and even after days of thinking, I still had only two classes written down, advanced English and advanced history. Overthinking was bogging me down. I knew there had to be a solution to the problem I was facing, but I didn't even know how to start solving it. Although I struggle every day with overthinking, I've been working on being more decisive without being impulsive and limiting my overthinking. I've learned ways to approach decisions 
And these strategies, when incorporated into decision making, cut down on the time, stress, and overall overthinking that comes with each decision. The first and maybe most impactful thing that you can do is to recognize you are overthinking to the point of hindering your intended goal. You need to know when you are in your head. Overthinking is habitual. It can become so normal and a part of your life that you may not even realize you are doing it. By wasting time thinking about things so inconsequential and minuscule in the grand scheme of things, you only hurt yourself. And by knowing when you are doing this, you can shut that way of thinking down and start taking a new approach to face your decisions. Like most bad things, bringing it to the light of day is the first step in being able to combat it. This definitely applies to overthinking as well. The second piece of advice I'd give is to prioritize your problems. One time, a friend of mine saw me worrying about something inconsequential, and she said, Sophia, remember, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't spend over five minutes worrying about it. That was something I really needed to hear. I was spending so much time worrying about an unimportant issue, even though there were better ways I could have spent my time. Don't give too much time, attention, or resources to things that don't deserve that effort. Instead, after you recognize you are overthinking, figure out which decisions are more important, and thus you should spend more time on. This leads to better decision making by putting a focus on what truly matters most, rather than what our brains might want us to focus on. As an overthinker, you can find yourself in one of two places. Either you can be an overthinker who thinks deeply about meaningful things, or you can be an overthinker who causes yourself immense stress and concern over minor issues. Which would you prefer? Another thing that helps after you recognize you are overthinking and prioritize your problems is, as cliche as it may sound, to trust yourself. Many times, overthinkers in a search for perfection will self-sabotage by looking to others to make the decision for them. Advice from other perspectives can be incredibly beneficial when making a decision, but it becomes a problem when others' opinions have more weight than your own. Instead of allowing that to happen, overthinking should become a part of you. You should have a framework for simple decisions, and you should rely on your character, intuition, and what fits best with you to make them. For example, it used to be that when I woke up in the morning, I would spend way too much time trying to decide on an outfit for the day. But now, realizing that my day-to-day -day outfits most likely won't matter when I'm 40 years old, I've come up with a framework to help me make this decision and move on with my day without dwelling on a minor issue for too much time. The keys to this framework are, will I be comfortable for the day, and is it reasonably presentable? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, I can choose and move on, knowing that it was never my intent to start a new fashion trend. Lastly, this is what I usually do if I'm on the fence about a decision. I minimize my options, find two that I'm most inclined to, and then I pick one. Use any method you would like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, heads or tails, but make a decision. Most decisions are not life-changing or permanent. If after you make a decision, you feel unhappy about it, you can usually always go back and tweak things. I'm not saying that you should vacillate between two options, but make sure that you learn when you are truly unhappy or just uncomfortable making decisions. And if the decision is permanent, I want you to remember this. Like the economist Thomas Sowell said, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. If after you make a well-informed decision, you start seeing the negative consequences of it, that does not mean that you chose the wrong option. Many times in decision-making, there is no right or wrong, but there will always be a downside. And if you start seeing that, you shouldn't beat yourself up over it. Don't do it. My dad was telling me the other day about how the greatest baseball team he ever was able to see was the 1998 Yankees. They won 70.4% of their games. That means that they lost nearly 30% of them. And they were one of the greatest teams of all time. Decision making is like this. Even if you only get it right 70% of the time, you can still call yourself a winner. And you must be willing to get it wrong 30% of the time. Because when we have imperfect information, if you're not willing to get it wrong, you will never be able to get it right. 
if you feel overwhelmed by overthinking, just remember that you can overcome. I used to think I was indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Thank you.